Liquid coolers are becoming more affordable and you can get a good 360 AIO for under 100 USD or Euros. Now, not all people are a fan of water coolers, so in today's video I'm gonna have a look at two air cooler options from Telmorite, Royal Pritor 130 Black and Royal Pritor 130 Ultra Black and see how these air coolers perform on a 9800X3D when pitted against a 360 AIO. In this case, the Cooler Master Atmos 360. In this video, I'll have a look at stress testing thermals and the clock speed maintained, in-game thermals and finish with noise levels. All these results are average from free runs and should not be compared with my previous tests, as I swapped RAM sticks and exhaust fans alongside the fact that I changed apartments. The case used for testing is the Fantex XT Ultra with its default front 140mm intake fans. The fan curve was the same for all coolers tested and was the default one. First, let's have a look at the two air coolers. What I can see is that the heatsink is exactly the same except that the Ultra version comes with one extra heat pipe in this case 7, while the standard version comes with 6 heat pipes. In theory, the 7 heat pipe version should have a clear advantage, right? The Phantom Spirit 120 SE has 7 heat pipes as well, but it's a bit shorter than the other two. For some odd reason, Telmarai chose to equip the Ultra version with an inferior front fan, in this case the Telmarai TL-K12 fan that is 25mm thick and tops at 69 CFM, while on the standard version we have the TL-H12-X28 which is 28mm thick and tops at 80.45 CFM. Later in the video I will swap the fan from the standard version to the ultra version and see if it really makes a difference. Now let's look at the Fermat run result. Ambient temperature was between 23 and 24 degrees Celsius. I can't load more than 3 files in this Hardware Info 64 log viewer, so I added the 360 AIO, which is in red, the Phantom Spirit 120 SE and the Royal Pretor 130 Ultra. All three files loaded are the worst results obtained in Fermat by these coolers. As we can see from the graph on the left, the AIO, again in red, was the only one to sit below 95 degrees, while the other two air coolers all sat on average above 95 degrees Celsius. And this is reflected in the right graph, where the AIO was the only cooler to maintain a constant 5425 MHz clock speed, while the other coolers sat below that. In fact, both air coolers exhibit minimal clock speed variation, and this is how thermal throttling works. And here is the chart with the temperature for all coolers added and average from free runs. There is minimal difference between these free air coolers, and that is because we are hitting the thermal limit, and the CPU is lowering a bit the clock speed. Moving on to the clock speed obtained from free CPU burner runs. As we can see, the AIO had no issues to maintain a 5425 MHz clock speed, while the Royal Pretor Ultra was close with 5422, with the standard version being a bit behind. The Phantom Spirit 120 SE is the one that had the lowest clock speed, as expected, as it was constantly hitting the CPU thermal limit. But what will happen if I put the front fan from the standard version on the Ultra version? To my surprise, the performance difference is minimal, at least on this 8-core CPU. This means that Thermalrite knew what it was doing when swapping the fans. This can be reflected as well in the CPU speed, as it outperformed the original fan by 2 MHz, but not quite reaching a stable 5425 MHz as the AIO. As this is not a realistic scenario, let's have a look at the temperatures obtained while gaming. I captured these results in Cyberpunk 2077 and I must confess that I was surprised by the results. 
or air coolers tested perform more or less the same, with the Phantom Spirit 120 SE being the one that delivered the best results. I would assume that having the lowest fan speed helps as it not sucking so much hot air exhausted by the 1590 FE, thus delivering a bit better results. Either way, all coolers had no issues in keeping the CPU cool, but the 360 AO had a clear advantage. Now let's have a look at the noise levels of these two Royal Praetor variants. Keep in mind that these measurements are taken with the phone, not a professional tool. At 60% fan speed, the Royal Praetor Ultra hovered at around 32 decibels, while the normal variant at around 33. At 75% fan speed, the Ultra version hovered at around 37 decibels, while the standard version at around 38. And at 100% fan speed, the Ultra version hovered at 43 decibels, while the standard version at 44. I would say that both produce more or less the same noise and are audible from 65%, while at 75% this will become noticeable. The difference comes from the front fan, as the 28mm tick is a bit louder. Now, which one should you get? Well, I will get the Ultra version, if I would have to choose between the two. It has 7 heat pipes that can help on power-hungry CPUs, and if you have laying around better fans, the gap will widen, but don't expect miracles. I would expect that these coolers would be separated by around 1 to 2 degrees Celsius at most on CPUs that can pull 200 watts. Given their price, I would say that it's not worth spending more going for other air coolers, only if noise is the most important to you as their performance is top-notch. These still can keep up with the 360 AIO, but nobody expects air coolers to do so. You would think that these are really close given the results, but that is not exactly the case, as these air coolers were not able to keep the 9800X3D under thermal throttle limit, because the CPU was constantly reducing a bit the core speeds, while the 360 AIO had no issues. Keep in mind that AIOs will lose performance down the road due to liquid evaporation and some other factors like reduced pump speed, but these issues appear after many years in use. And that's it for this video. If you liked the video or found it useful, hit the thumbs up button, consider subscribing to the channel and drop a comment below and let me know what cooler are you using. Take care and I hope to see you all in the next one.